Hey, uh, we're going to talk about don't ask, don't tell. And you get the first question, Mrs. Engel. A federal judge's order to halt enforcement of the military's don't ask, don't tell policy was hailed by gay activists as a landmark ruling in their struggle to expand their rights. Don't you think it's time to end discrimination of gays and lesbians in our military? First question. Second question. How do you feel about such Republicans as Dick Cheney and Laura Bush coming out in favor of gay rights? The um, policies within the military, especially this one, are under review right now. And we should be waiting for the review of our military to make those decisions, not jumping ahead and making those decisions as Senator Reid tried to do when he put that provision in the defense bill. We in, here in Nevada have been very careful to define the marriage as between a man and a woman through two general elections. Over 70% of our population has voted to uh, define marriage as between a man and a woman. I support what Nevada has done and I will represent our constituents on that basis. And what do you think about Republicans such as uh, former Vice President Dick Cheney and First Lady Laura Bush coming out in favor of gay rights? That, of course, is their personal opinion and their prerogative. Every American has the freedom of uh, speech, and they have the freedom to have an opinion. That's great. Okay. Senator Reid. Mitch, I respectfully suggest to my opponent that she simply doesn't understand what went on in Washington. The bill that came up to do away with Don't Ask, Don't Tell said that it could only be done away with if the Secretary of Defense signed off on it and the President of the United States and both of them certified that would not hurt our defense. And they could only do that after the report was issued by the Pentagon as to whether or not it was good for the military. So it was the right thing to do. The legislation on the Senate floor didn't say we're going to get rid of don't ask, don't tell. It said that a Republican Secretary of Defense appointed by President Bush along with President Obama would have to certify that it would ha do no harm to our troops only after the report by the Pentagon came down. Okay, Mrs. Engel. Well, I submit to you that that's the wrong way to do legislation, just like when Nancy Pelosi said that we should pass the bill and then read it. We should be looking at that review before we make bills based on that review. So the review needs to come out first and then the bill. So I submit to you, Senator, that I do know the process. The process is read the bill first and then pass it. Okay, we have a couple of questions on Social Security. First to you, Senator Reid. Earlier in the year, it was announced that this year, the Social Security system will pay out more in benefits than it receives in payroll taxes, an important threshold it was not expected to cross until at least 2016. Your opponent blames you for the shortfall. She claims you raided the Social Security Trust Fund to offset the deficit. What's your response? Social Security is a promise we have to keep. It takes care of seniors in their golden years. That's why I worked so hard to protect Social Security. I feel so strongly about this that I took on the President of the United States when he tried to privatize it, and we won that battle. Social Security is an important program. The actuarials at Social Security and also the CBO has said within the past month that Social Security will pay out 100% of its benefits for the next 35 to 40 years. That's important. And also understand that even after that, there would be a shortfall of 15 to 20 percent. We need to take care of uh, that in, if 35 or 40 years from now, and we can do that with the minor taking. Don't frighten people about Social Security. The deal that was made by President Reagan and Tip O'Neill is holding strong. The money is there, and it's taking care of our folks, and will for the next 35 years I've just indicated. Thank you. Mrs. Engel. Man up, Harry Reid. You need to understand that we have a problem with Social Security. That problem was created because of government taking that money out of the Social Security Trust Fund. In 1990, you said it was stealing to use Social Security for anything but Social Security. And then you voted to take that Social Security money into the general fund where it could be generally used for generally anything. When you did that, you left IOUs there, special treasury bonds that are kept in a filing cabinet in, West, in Parkersburg, West Virginia. What we need to do is keep our promises to our senior citizens by putting the money back in the trust fund and going forward, allowing our workers to have the option of a personalized social security 
retirement plan that becomes an asset to them, just like your thrift savings plan is an asset to you. If it's good enough for you, it should be re good enough for the rest of us. Senator Reid. Mitch, these ideas of my opponent are really extreme. I said CBO. The actuarial said there's plenty of money in that trust fund account. During the Clinton years, we did not use the trust fund monies to offset the deficit. We were, we were strengthening Social Security by not using it to offset the deficit. Her facts <coughs> are absolutely wrong. Okay, Mrs. Engel, you have another question on Social Security. Sure. You said during a primary election debate moderated by John Ralston, and I quote, we need to phase Social Security and Medicare out in favor of something privatized. Before the primary, you used the word privatized, and now you use the word personalized. Why did you change your position on Social Security? Well, because of the idea that personalized covers both private and public. As I stated, Harry Reid and many government employees have a personalized retirement account. <coughs> it's called the Thrift Savings Plan. That's an account that is their personalized account. And as I said, if it's good enough for Harry Reid, it should be good enough for the rest of us. When we talk about Social Security and the money being there, remember that the CBO said that by 2016 we'd be in the red. Well, we're in the red now. $41 billion more is going out than is coming in. And if we don't do something to fix this, by 2037, anyone under 40 years of age will not be receiving the benefits of the money that they paid in paycheck after paycheck. Senator Reid. CBO, I repeat for the third time, the actuaries said for the next 35 years, everyone will get all the money they want. Even after that, it takes minor tinkering to take care of it in the out years. The arrangement that was made by President Reagan and Speaker of the House, Tip O'Neill, looked forward to today, recognizing that huge amounts of money came in initially, and then as the time went on, you would have to pay out more. Now, she talks about, and has for years, talked about getting rid of Social Security, for years. This isn't something just during the primary. Now she's trying to change her tune. I've heard her even say, why don't we have a program like they had in Chile or England? Those two countries ruined their pensioners. They went broke. You can't put these monies into a, the stock market. Look what would have happened had we put this money in the stock market as was suggested by President Bush. This is an extreme idea and is not good and it will destroy Social Security. And Mrs. Engel, 30 seconds. Well, I will just say, there you go again trying to uh, hedge on this idea that what is going on is that our Social Security system had $2.5 trillion, $25 trillion, $2.5 trillion in it, and now it has IOUs. What we need to do is make sure that we keep our promise to our senior citizens to put that money back. Okay, our next question is on Yucca Mountain, and Senator Reid, you're up first. Okay. Last week, the chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission directed agency scientists to stop working at Yucca Mountain. This was, of course, cheered by Yucca Mountain opponents. But this is what Mrs. Engel has said about you, and I'm quoting from the program face-to-face, -face, quote, Harry Reid has demonized the nuclear industry. There's a pot of money out there. We have some potential for some job creation and diversification. Question. Did we miss a golden opportunity to create jobs and receive benefits from the federal government during a time when we really needed it? Mitch, we tried for 28 years to get something from the federal government. They gave us nothing. Yucca Mountain is not good for the country, and it is really bad for Nevada. The most poisonous substance known to man a few miles outside Las Vegas, no. People said we couldn't kill it. It's dead. Yucca Mountain will no longer list. We need to use it for something else. But my opponent suggests using it for a nuclear reactor. I, there isn't enough water in the whole state of Nevada to build a nuclear reactor. It's a nuclear reactor. The only nuclear generation that uses more, elect, more water, I'm sorry, than uh, coal is nuclear. There's just not enough water here to do anything about it. I'm not against nuclear power. I just was a, totally opposed to trying to bring all the garbage from it to the state of Nevada. Okay, Mrs. Engel. Well, I've always voted against making Nevada the nuclear waste dump of the nation. But the science now has outpaced the um, need for a dump here in Nevada. We don't want a dump here in Nevada, but we need to 
quit demonizing the nuclear energy industry. What we have are breeder reactors <coughs> and submarines that use liquid metal to cool. It isn't always water that's that required for nuclear energy. And we should look into the potentials for nuclear energy. Certainly we shouldn't be dependent upon foreign oil. We should be developing all of our resources. And we should also allow coal-fired plants to be built in Ely, Nevada, which Harry Reid killed because he says coal makes us sick. We have to stop this with this extreme environmental outlook, catch up to the technologies of the day, and use those things to create jobs here in Nevada. Thank you. Senator Reid. I heard my opponent talk about these coal-fired plants. Of course, we have got something much better than the coal plants now. We have a power line that's worked out between the owners of those power plants from the north to the south, all using renewable energy, except the one in Mesquite, which is going to use now not only natural gas, which is our product, an American product, 40% less polluting, than diesel fuel, and it's going to also be solar. So we've made great progress, and I admire and appreciate what Envy Energy has done, backing off those coal plants, which even they recognize hasn't worked. Thank we you. have created lots and lots of jobs with renewable energy Thank to you, match Senator. whatever losses from the coal-fired plants. Next topic is education, and you have the question. You said on multiple occasions, Mrs. Engel, including an interview with CBN, that you wanted to eliminate the Department of Education, which means you favor eliminating funding to schools with low-income students. You favor eliminating Pell Grants for low-income college students. You favor eliminating Head Start, an early childhood education program for lower-income children. And you want to zero out funding for three-year-old children with disabilities. Is that correct? <laughs> totally incorrect. As I said in my opening statement, I was a teacher for 25 years. I also served on a school board in Nye County, and I was on the Education Committee for eight years in the Nevada State <coughs> Assembly. What I know of the Department of Education at the federal level is that it's an agency that makes one-size-fits-all policy that fits no one, like No Child Left Behind. We send our money to Washington, D.C. to be skimmed off by 6,000 bureaucrats, that's $69 million billion a year that is skimmed off, sent back to us in the form of underfunded and unfunded mandates. We need to keep that money right here in the state as close to the local level as possible where parents and teachers are the stakeholders and they should be making the policies. That's our 10th Amendment a right. Senator Reid. Mitch. Um, the Department of Energy does wonderful things for the state through programs that they've initiated. We've reduced the amount of interest that parents have to pay for their children's loans. We have been able to do something with Pell Grants, $550 a year more, which is extremely helpful to keep kids in college. What we've been able to do is bring $400 million to the state to help K through 12 <coughs> during the last year. We've been able to bring $350 million to our university system. This is all initiated through the Department of en uh, Education, and we need to protect the Department of Education. Ronald Reagan had an idea when he first came to office, maybe we should try getting rid of that. When he left office, he knew it was the wrong thing to do. Some of the best programs that we have with the Department of Education were initiated by Ronald Reagan. Okay. Mrs. Engel, 30 seconds. The Department of Education has been around since the early 80s, late 70s, and since then, the quality of our education has diminished year after year after year. We would be so much better off taking our 10th Amendment right, just the way that Arizona did with the illegal aliens, and just the way that Missouri did with Obamacare. We need to take our 10th Amendment rights, put that education as close to the local level as possible, where parents and teachers make the policies. Okay, our next question is on Iraq. And that's for you, Senator Reid. Senator Reid, you were quoted as saying the following. The war is lost, and the surge is not accomplishing anything as indicated by the extreme violence, end quote. Do you believe that your statement demoralized the troops and were inaccurate as judged by the success of the troop surge? Mitch, 